Today's video is a follow-on from last week's, where we covered how an aircraft decelerates after landing or in the event of a rejected takeoff. Last week we explored the brakes and in today's video we'll be looking into how ground spoilers and reverse thrust contribute to deceleration. Once again, we will be exploring the topic in the context of modern commercial jets. Let's get started. Welcome back to another video. My name is Deepak from Flying101 and I release videos related to aircraft and flying. It's all from a pilot's standpoint and the way the concepts are explained are meant to be quite straightforward. If you are interested in any of this, um, please click the subscribe button. Don't forget to press the bell notification so you're notified every time a new video is released. Let's kick off with uh, spoilers. If you have ever sat by the window with a view of the wings, you may have seen panels on top of the wing pop up after landing. Those panels are the ground spoilers. Now ground spoilers and speed brakes form part of the secondary flight control surfaces. They are movable panels on top of the wings and can be deployed manually by the pilots or they deploy automatically under certain conditions. Speed brakes or roll control spoilers use a fewer number of panels and are pure drag devices. Ground spoilers on the other hand which usually employ all panels and extend fully, are used to slow an aircraft down after landing or during a rejected takeoff. They simultaneously increase drag and reduce lift, hence the name spoilers as they spoil lift. From an aerodynamic standpoint, a simple way to exemplify the role of spoilers as uh, deceleration devices would be to imagine holding our hand out of the window in a moving car. Now, as long as the palm is facing down, the relative airflow is flowing parallel to it and there isn't much drag experienced. But the moment we rotate it to the point where the palm is facing the airflow, there is quite a bit of force experienced as, as a result of the drag created and that pushes our hand back. This is a drag being experienced and ground spoilers do this to facilitate an aircraft's deceleration. Remember, drag is the resistance to motion. And when spoilers are deployed, they do exactly that, create aerodynamic drag and decrease lift. And in this process, they contribute significantly to maximize wheel brake efficiency as there is increased weight on the landing gear as a result of the decrease in lift. Now, spoiler function is mostly automatic on modern commercial airliners where they are usually armed by the pilots before landing or takeoff and they are fully extended once the aircraft speed is above a given threshold and the takeoff is rejected or after landing sensors detect that the main gear is compressed so we're talking about weight on wheels or a thrust lever position is met so bringing the thrust levers back to idle or reverse for example and they are hydraulically actuated as the aerodynamic forces are pretty strong and so the hydraulic systems on an aircraft assist greatly with the extension of spoilers. Having talked about spoilers, now let's see how aircraft engines contribute to the deceleration of an aircraft after landing or in the event of a rejected takeoff. Now thrust reversers are part of the engine and on jet aircraft, they provide a significant way of increasing the rate of deceleration during the initial stages of both the landing roll or a rejected takeoff from high speed. The way thrust reverses work is effectively redirecting the jet thrust forward, therefore providing aerodynamic braking. Thrust reverses contribute significantly to an aircraft's deceleration during the landing roll or a rejected takeoff, and their effect is most pronounced at high speeds. Many high bypass ratio engines reverse thrust by changing the direction of the fan airflow. And now what a high bypass ratio engine is, is a subject for another video. But these types of engines are very common on modern jets. And since the majority of the thrust is derived from the fan, it is unnecessary to reverse the, let's say, the exhaust gas flow. The difference in stopping distance in an aircraft with and without reverse thrust is quite marked. This is manually selected by the pilots using the thrust levers. 
and when deployed immediately once the main gear touches down, coupled with the extension of ground spoilers, can reduce the landing distance quite dramatically without producing much friction in the brakes. Reverse thrust on, say, an Airbus 320 has two positions, RL and maximum. RL is most commonly used while landing on long dry runways, while max reverse would be used during a rejected takeoff or when landing on a runway that may be limiting or a wet or contaminated runway. Once again, thrust reverses on commercial jets are hydraulically actuated. So a quick summary, the primary purpose of the ground spoilers is to maximize wheel brake efficiency by spoiling lift generated by the wing and thus forcing the full weight of the aircraft onto the landing gear. The spoiler panels also help slow the aircraft by producing aerodynamic drag. Now depending upon the aircraft type, the ground spoiler extension may be fully automatic when the system is armed, provided that other deployment criteria such as weight on wheels or thrust lever position are met. Thrust reverses, which are most effective at high speeds, redirect the jet thrust forward, therefore serving as aerodynamic brakes. Even at idle setting, the effect of reverse thrust is quite significant in helping slow an aircraft down from high speeds, and they assist greatly in reducing the friction on the brakes. All right, so there we have it, an overview of the various deceleration devices that are employed on modern commercial airliners. Remember, spoilers and thrust reversers work in tandem with aircraft brakes to slow an aircraft down during a landing roll or a rejected takeoff. I hope you enjoyed that and it wasn't too difficult to follow. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it along. As always, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions even, or if you would like a certain topic that's related to flying covered, please put that in the comments below and I shall do my best to cover that in a future video. Well, thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next video when we shall talk about low visibility operations and auto lands. Well, thanks so much again and I wish you a great day.